join me today as I share how I built these modular walkways and ramps. You can adjust the height of these ramps and even change around the guardrails using some magnets. Hopefully this will get the wizard off my back about that box video I made last week. So I start off with some single corrugated cardboard from that box video last week again. And I just trim it down to be a nice square shape. I then cut two inch strips out of either side of it and this will act as like the ramp leading up or like connecting the bridge to whatever you're connecting it to. Then to connect these together I'm just going to use some gaffer tape here. This stuff is really strong and it has a nice cool texture on it as well. I make sure to leave a little bit of space in between the two pieces that way you can bend it around. And then just for texturing them, I use some of the drywall tape. And this will be the total width of the bridge. And I'll end up trimming off all of that excess that isn't covered in drywall tape. When I make some that are too wide, I just line the drywall tape up next to each other and cut off any excess. Now we've got this piece, it's just about texturing it up and adding some details. I just use some cardstock strips here just to add some metal banding around the edges. When that banding is done, on the back I lay down some of that gaffer tape as well just to get rid of that cardboard texture and replace it with something a little bit more interesting. And this gaffer tape, again, it has a really nice texture to it. I make sure not to cover over the little bends again with another layer of tape because that'll make it even harder to bend and flex. Now here is the strategy for getting them at any height. These little craft pots they're meant for mixing paints or storing little bits and bobs. But if we stack them on top of each other and do a little bit of modifications, we can use them as pillars for our bridges. So I roughly get the center and stick one of the lids on the center of the bridge. And then onto each of the cups, I stick a lid on the bottom. And this will mean that you can then adjust how many cups that you have and you can put more underneath. Now, by default, these have a little bit of a lip around the top, which makes it hard to easily take the cap on and off. Which is good for its normal use, but for us, to make it a bit easier, I just sand off all the excess and get rid of that lip. I then texture it up again with some gaffer tape. I even used some bicarbonate soda for some of them to make them look like concrete pillars. And then I just use some rhinestones around all of the little lips of the lids to make it look like some metal banding. I then grab some of this magnetic strip and cut a piece that is the length of the main piece of the bridge, not the two flaps on either end. And I just cut that in half once I've got it because it's a bit too thick. This magnetic strip isn't too strong and the adhesive on the back is pretty weak. So I just stick it on with some hot glue and even some super glue in some spots. And then for the guardrails, I just grab some scrap chicken wire and that magnets onto the edge really nicely. What I do do, however, just to make it a bit stronger is once I've cut it to size, I just add on a little coffee stir stick. I was originally going to use hot glue, but I think super glue is going to be much better because it's not going to leave a huge glumpy mess. So by placing the coffee stir stick just above where the metal meets the magnet, the coffee stir stick will sit on the platform. And that means that it's being kept in by the magnetic force of the metal on the magnet. 
as well as being then secured in place by the stir stick. You can see here I've made a couple of different sizes and different types, some with just straws and scrap pieces of metal to make it look like they're junk that have been put together. On all of the edges that are exposed with corrugation, I'm just going to grab some wall filler and fill those in. You could use any sort of putty here, you could also mix some PVA glue with bicarb soda and fill the holes that way. Onto painting, I'll give it all a base coat of a black Mod Podge of course because it's made of card and it needs some more protection. While the Mod Podge is drying, I thought the barricades looked a bit too bland, so I cut out some archways to stick on the walls. And this was inspired by Dark Tide. The video game has a lot of these little archways on the barriers. I thought that would be pretty cool to add here as well. I also make some just out of some scrap pieces of card and corrugated paper and I use some PVA glue here to keep them in place. I then continue the paint job to make it all match in with the rest of my scenery. Just a dark grey spray can with a silver dry brushing on everything, a couple brown and black washes, and then a final silver highlight brush. On to all of the pillars where the lid is glued and all the rhinestone beads are put on there. I do go over and paint those in a bronze just to make them stand out and add a little bit more interesting colors. I then also go over and just stick on a printout of some hazard stripes onto the floors of some of the areas. And here you can see the magnetic guide rails work really well once everything is all put together. Especially if the magnetic strips are perpendicular. And then with one hand it's a bit difficult to pop them out, but despite sanding them down, they still are strong enough to stick in really well. And you can see the bent edges means you can have one edge lying flat against the tabletop and then another edge lying flat against whatever elevator platform you're going to or between different size platforms. Thanks for watching, I hope you learned something new, and I'll see you next week with something different. And this will do.